When you try to launch something in Windows that requires elevated privileges, a user account control UAC prompt will appear normally with two buttons, yes and no. However, in this case, there is only no. The yes button is missing. This happens when your user doesn't have administrative privileges. However, if there is another user on the same Windows installation that does have administrative privileges, Windows will try to run this prompt from another user, sometimes giving you an option to insert the username or selecting the username itself and prompting you for the password of that other account, which has administrative access. However, if there is no user in Windows that does have administrative access, this UAC prompt will not have a yes button and it will also not prompt you for another user credentials. It is not possible to strip administrative access from all users in Windows. It will actually tell you that you need at least one user with admin privileges. However, it's only the case if you're using graphical interface, that is GUI. You can still remove all administrators from this PC, from command prompt and also using some third-party utilities. So how do you fix this issue? Well, actually, first and best way is to reinstall Windows. I don't know why people are afraid of doing so. Why don't they want to learn how to do it? And also, why are you reluctant to delete everything from your drives so you will have a fresh drive and then just wait a little while while your software, games and everything else download? Actually, even if your Windows is working perfectly, you should do at least once a year a full complete reinstall of Windows. Not reset your PC, but delete everything and install Windows from thumb drive. You don't even lose your license if you got an official copy of Windows. And after you reinstall Windows, install fresh and new drivers, fresh and new versions of your software, and freshly reinstall all your games since they get constantly updated and normally that leads to a lot of leftover junk, basically trash, on your drives. And also reinstalling Windows usually fixes all the problems with Windows. Anyway, if you are reluctant to do that, I will show you how to fix this yes button issue. So on this machine I created two accounts, one is Easy, which is an administrator, and the other one is IADM, which is not an administrator. Please note, that I only use local accounts, I don't use Microsoft accounts. The usernames are one word, without spaces, and they only contain English letters and numbers. If you use your real name, first and last name, with a space between them, if you use your native alphabet in your username that has some special characters, or it's even a non-English alphabet like Cyrillic, for example, or if you are using Microsoft Online account, or any combination of those, you should reconsider your life choices. Anyway, there are some instructions online how to fix this issue. Unfortunately, very often they skip steps, they provide you with incomplete or incorrect guidance, or in many cases don't work at all. And they also almost never show any errors that you may experience and how to resolve them. For example, they will tell you, oh, just lower the UAC level. Well, when you lower the UAC level, it will bring up the UAC pop-up without the yes button. And you will not be able to do that. And this is a clear indication that that advisor online has absolutely no clue about the problem he tries to advise you on. So not only I will show you how to fix this yes button issue, I will also try to show as many errors as you may experience and what to do with them. So the first thing you need to do is to launch Windows in recovery mode. There are multiple ways to do that. The easiest one is to hold shift and then click on restart from the start menu. Your computer will reboot and if you are running at least Windows 8 or 10 or 11, you will be greeted with this recovery menu in blue. Here, use your mouse or keyboard to select Troubleshoot, then Advanced Options, and then the guides online tell you to launch Startup Settings, and then select Restart. The PC will reboot again, and you will be presented with a number of startup options. Those guides online say that you need to select the sixth option, 
safe mode with command prompt. To select it, you either use the F buttons on your keyboard, but keep in mind that in recent years, the function keys also double as a media keys and the media functions take priority. So on many new keyboards, especially on laptops, if you just press F6, for example, it will activate whatever media function is attached to it, in this case, next track or fast forward. And to actually press F6, you need to hold the FN button first. However, it's okay just to press the numeric 6 key for the same result. The computer will reboot once again, and now you will enter command prompt. The online guides tell you to run this command, net local group administrators, then your username, IADM in this case, slash add, to add the user IADM to the group of administrators. Unfortunately, that gives an error, access denied, because you have to do this being an administrator. They will also tell you to activate the built-in administrator. Actually, Windows does have a built-in, hidden and disabled administrative account exactly to solve issues like this one. The command you need to run to enable it is net user administrator slash active yes. However, access is also denied. So what you actually need to do is to reboot again in that recovery blue menu. Go to troubleshoot advanced settings again, but instead of startup settings, select command prompt. It went directly to the command prompt in this case, However, in certain circumstances, you will be presented with another screen where you have to select administrator and then enter password, which you don't know because there is no password. So leave the password field blank and just continue. Now you're in command prompt with administrative privileges as it could be seen on the top. Let's try to add your user again to the local administrators group, but it fails again. So we'll do it another way. First, we need to reactivate that disabled administrative account. The command is net user administrator slash active colon yes. Please note that there is no space after the slash and there is no space near the colon. Make sure that you retype the command exactly as you see it on the screen. This is one thing to notice. Another thing to notice is that I'm using an English version of Windows, and the account is named Administrator in English. However, if you are using a localized version of Windows in another language, unfortunately, for some reason, the account names may be also localized. They may be spelled differently, or they may be in a different language entirely, for example, in Russian. So if you get an error, user not found, make sure you're using the right name of the administrator user. In a Russian version of Windows, you will need to type administrator in Russian in Cyrillic instead of administrator in English. And same goes for all other languages. Anyway, if you do everything right, you will get a response that the command completed successfully. Please note that we are doing this using an administrator, which is indicated in the heading of the window. So after we completed this step, you need to get back into Windows. However, if you boot Windows the normal way, nothing will change. So what you need to do is again, boot into this blue recovery menu, go to troubleshoot, go to advanced options, go to startup settings again, press restart, and in the selection menu, you need to select the fourth item which is enable safe mode. Again, you can use either F4 or just 4 on your keyboard. In most cases, you will boot into your normal user. So what you need to do is to go to the start menu and log out and change the user to administrator or just select administrator from that menu. As you may remember, you didn't have an administrative user before. So this is the hidden administrator that we have just enabled. So log into that user. It doesn't have a password. Some guides online say that you also need to use the net command to give this user a password. However, from my experience, you don't need to do that and you can use this account without the password. When you log into this administrator account, if you are doing it for the first time, Windows may try to set it up until you finally get into the desktop. You may notice that the desktop actually misses quite a few features, for example, the start menu. 
but that doesn't bother us. You can still launch File Explorer by clicking on the icon, or if there is no icon, press Windows E on your keyboard and the File Explorer will appear. Then you need to navigate to System32 folder inside Windows folder and find a file which is called NetPLVs. This is the user control panel applet. So double click to launch it and the user accounts will open. As you can see, we no longer have the easy user, which was an administrator, but I deleted it for the sake of making materials for this video. But we have the administrator account, which is that hidden administrator account we enabled, and also the IADM user, which is not an administrator, it's just a user. So select it and click properties, then go to the group membership tab and there change it from standard user to administrator. Apply the settings and now you can see that the user became an administrator. Another way to achieve the same results is using command prompt. So what you need to do is press Windows and R to open the run command. Everything here will be run with administrative privileges. So type CMD and press OK to launch the command prompt and it will be launched with administrative privileges. And here use the same command that gave you an error in the previous steps. Net local group administrators. Again, in other languages, they may be called administratori or whatever that is in your language. So this is an English version. So net local group administrators, the name of the user, IIDM, slash add. Now the command completes successfully and the user became an administrator. So these are two ways you can do the same thing. And now we need to somehow reboot the computer, which is a little bit tricky since we don't have the start menu to do that. Anyway, what you need to do is to press WinR to bring up the run command, then type shutdown slash minus R, R for reboot. Press OK and after a couple seconds, your computer will restart and boot normally. Now you have to check that the user that didn't have the yes button in USC prompts now has one and when you have verified that this user can now run USC prompt successfully, it's a good idea from security standpoint to make that backup administrative account hidden again. So what you need to do is to once again boot into the blue recovery menu, go to troubleshoot, go to advanced settings, launch command prompt, and the command you need to run to disable that technical administrative account is net user administrator slash active colon no. Run this command and the administrator user will be hidden again. After that you can reboot your PC as normal and use your user with all the USC privileges as normal. So this is how you solve this issue without reinstalling Windows. However, if you don't want this particular user to have administrative access, that means before you remove the administrative rights from this user, you must create another user in Windows who will be an administrator. Since Windows cannot operate normally unless at least one user is an administrator. So if you don't want this user to be an administrator, you must have at least two users, one of which is. I am the god of YouTube! Like, subscribe, jingle bells.